I think we're live. It's been so long since I did this. I can't remember how to do it. Hope everyone's good. Nice to see so many faces in the chat. Uh, all my favorite people. Lovely to see you all. Fantastic. <laughs> I knew you meant seafood, Lily, not seafood. I'm on a seafood diet, but seafood, I eat it. Where's everybody? 18 in the house. So, uh, quick sound check. Please just tell me if you can hear me okay before I waffle on and nobody can hear me. My usual sound check. I am. I'll just wait for you guys to give me a all clear on the sound. Thank you, Barnaby. Nice to see you. Good. Sound okay. Sound okay. Everyone's with me. Excellent. Oh, thanks, Esther, Kelly, Elizabeth, Maureen. Jane, Ron, thank you, thank you. Right, so today's um, plan is we're going to go through the eight form solo and then I'm going to introduce you to Joe, for those of you who don't know, my son Joseph, and we're going to do the applications paired up together. So um, sound good, picture good, excellent. Excellent. Okay, so... Let us do, we're not going to do much of a warm up, okay, because I want to sp spend more time on some applications today. So it's going to be a little quick shake out and then straight into the eight forms. I hope everyone's okay with that. And I haven't done it in mirror image since the last nugget. <laughs> when was that? A few weeks now, wasn't it? All right, uh, I'm going to put some music on, just wait and see if we get any more people. There was 22 when we started and we're down to 19, so... We've lost three already. Not sure what that's about. Give me a second. I'm going to put the music on. So talk amongst yourselves. If anyone knows any good jokes, you can share it. It's live, you know. That's how you can tell I haven't done this for a while. I forgot to plug in the music system, but it's all good now. Right, while um, I'm going to get ready and have ne neglected the eight, busy with the 24. Okay. Every posture in the eight in the 24 as well, it's the same. But it's worth practicing the eight as part of your warm up because then you don't go backwards. Then you, when you get to that posture in the 24, you'll, you'll already be good at it and you can improve on it. Hi, Bella. Christine, hi. Good to have you here. <laughs> Mike, it's fine. I haven't started yet. I was giving people a chance to join. Got 22 people. Six thumbs up, so that's the start. Now, um, before I start the warm-up, I would appreciate if anyone has any questions on the applications of the eight, that is... If there's any particular movements you want me to pay attention to, or any particular movements you don't understand in terms of, and when I say applications, for those of you who don't know what, what I mean, I'm talking in terms of martial art, in terms of using the movements uh, to defend against, against an attacker, uh, and actually using the movements in a, in a functional way as opposed to purely as a meditation or a health art. So that's what I mean by application. And um, what I'd like to say a little bit is when you practice the intent it also is good for your mind because it puts a cloud hands cool because it puts a, um, a meaning behind the movements rather than just doing the movements as empty moves. You have a feeling behind them. So even if you're not training for self-defense, I think everyone that does uh, Tai Chi should understand the applications because it's the root of what we practice. So uh, of course it won't make you a deadly fighter just learning applications and without training, but it will just give you an appreciation for it and you, it will start to make sense. Snake creeps down. Sorry, Mike. We're only doing the eight form today. Eight form applications. Closing. Okay.
And then is there any particular bits, like particular questions? And that's fine. You can type them as we go along. So, Right. We're all going to do a quick warm up together, like minimal, quick one run time, one time through the set. And then we're going to get into the applications. OK. Even put the mats down today. How's that? Well, it's good to be back and they go home. Okay, it's just minimal warm up. Wrists, elbows, shoulders. So bouncing. Keep the head up as usual. Everything relax, loosen it off. You quickly tell where you're tense because it's impossible to have a bounce if you're tense. Things don't let go. I just pay attention to what's not moving. Okay, some arm swings. Okay, so we're gonna do the eight posture solo first, all together. And I'm gonna to attempt to mirror image it, first time since the last nugget, so. You better ready position. Commence in four. Pulsing monkey. Push. Parting wild horses, mate. Kicking with the heel. Grasping the bird's tail. Warmed up and ready to go. Anyone? When I first started looking at the eight, it took me ages to understand the between party wild horse man and grasping the bird's tail. Thanks, Esther. I'll, I'm happily to go over that. Right, keep typing, keep asking me questions. I'll get around to as many as I can, but I'm gonna bring Joe in now to help me out. So, here he comes. 
Say hello to the international audience, Joseph. This is Joe, my son, Joe. And um, we're going to go through some of these and answer some of these questions. Check out our Facebook and Instagram. You can see what Joe's been up to. He's been training really hard the last week. We've been working on some Hupkoon. So good question from Esther Sally. Hey, Bill. Hey, everyone's saying hello to Joe. Great. Yeah, keep them coming. Great. So question from Esther. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. What do you know? <laughs> So far, questions have been um, cloud hands, difference between part wild horse's mane and I presume you mean pung, the first part of grass bird's tail, and uh, closing. So we can go over those first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with Esther's because it's a kind of a meatier question and that we can get our teeth into that because the important difference between pung and liet is one of energy, one of energy, as in direction of energy. When you, look at, when you look at a posture, you see a fixed posture in a book, or you look at a Leslie Golden Rooster, thank you. You look at a particular um, movement and you just see a static posture. What you can't see is energy. You can't see the direction of force, the direction of intent. And um, so, ha here's the nice guy with a lot of money. Nice to have you back with us. Wild horse and bird's tail, hi Joe. From Lily. Okay, so let's do this one first because it's a good question. When you see a position, you can see that, and I can say, right, that's pung and that's yeah. But really, they're almost the same, right? So let's look at it in terms of the actual uh, energy of it. I'm going to move this down so we can go on the mat so you can see what I mean. Hope you guys can hear me all okay. Kia, just put a message if it's not, not super clear. Now, Pung is, the idea of pung is we are underneath the opponent's arm, okay, because the direction is upwards. So this is pung, okay? So usually when you see the movement, it's going upwards. Okay, liet is horizontal energy. And think of tearing a piece of paper or splitting something. It literally translates to split. So or rend or tear or something like that. And if you guys are on a, in a supermarket with a trolley, and you want to turn the trolley down an aisle, you have to use both hands, don't you? You have to push with one and pull with the other. And that's going to give you the energy of split. So I'll give it an example. If uh, Joseph's coming at me with a right punch, please, and I'm using this method. So I'm using the, this is the holding the ball, okay? From here, I'm stepping deep. This hand, this is the energy of shoulder. And then this is the energy of split. Again. So if I'm defending the punch, okay, and I'm tw this is the first part. All right, I can step in, I can lift. This part is up. Now you see I've kind of got him sort of on one corner and it's difficult for him. Okay, so I'm kind of rocking him. If you imagine trying to lift a heavy fridge or something, you rock it up on, to one corner and then you turn it. So one more time. Turning, rocking it up, and then, and the last part, which is the splitting energy, is the energy of parting the wild horse's mane. If you think of a horse shaking its mane, then the energy goes out. You can actually see it sideways, right? So where does that come from? It's a, a rapid uh, oscillation of the center of the horse and then the, the hair just simply follows that energy. So that's a uh, first example of part horse's mane. Thanks, Joe. Hope that clarifies it. You know, there's some other questions. We've got cloud hands was the first question from Bowl of Kittens from Kelly. So I'll give you one slightly different one. And there's a, there's a lot, okay? I'll give you a, a slightly different one. Thanks, Jane. Give a slightly different one. And those of you know, I like, I like the uh, sport of mixed martial art because in mixed martial arts, um, that's where they have little gloves and they can grab. So it's one of the few combat sports where they can punch and grab and mix them up. So you'll start to see lots of kind of movements that might make sense to you if you understand martial arts. And, you know, Tai Chi, because Tai Chi uses grabbing and striking simultaneously, you might see a lot of things. So example is, 
Sometimes they use the wall, the cage, right? And I'm going you know, to use your imagination here. But I'm, I'm with my back against the cage, and Joseph has me pressed in. He's, yeah, he's getting a lot of forward energy. He's, he's trapping me in. If I try and escape, it's very difficult. He's got his foot in deep. So I'm being kind of pinned back. So check this out. I'm going to take this hand, I'm going to bring it over the top. I'm going to grab hold of his chin. I'm going to turn my waist. And that kind of peels him off. Okay? He may fall, but kind of in a real, real life, what will probably happen from here is he'll try and catch himself. And then that will enable me to use something else. Here's my golden rooster from Leslie, right? So you can see how the movements kind of work together. His head's on the other side. He's pinning me back. I need to get the biggest lever I can, which is his chin. And I don't try and pull with my arm. If he's making his neck strong for me, he's resisting. So what I do is I turn my waist and use my whole body. Yeah, and with both hands like clouds, we've also got the, they're not allowed to do this in mixed martial art, but we've also got the low strike. So you've got this, you've got this. See that? A couple of important things. One is that the hand goes to the end of the lever. The second is the pull comes from the shifting of the weight and the turning of the waist, not from, not from the arm. Okay, so that's, again, one example. I should also state, for those of you that don't know, that these movements don't just have an application. I'm giving you an example. So it's like each one is a tool. Here's a screwdriver. Here's a hammer. Here's a drill. Okay, what's the application? Oh, we can turn a screw in. But yeah, there's many different ways to do it and many different uses. So you understand these are tools, uh, not, not literal, not literal movements. If you try to make it, you probably notice Tai Chi doesn't look much like fighting, right? Of course not. If you see a person doing shadow boxing or shadow fighting, it's, that's, they're more replicating um, the fight itself. What we're trying to understand is the mechanics and we're trying to understand the principle of the movement. So they're conceptual. Can also be an area clearing block. Absolutely, Barnaby. So the key for the cloud hands, if you want to use it that way, and they, they call it cat washing his face, right, in the Shaolin. The key for that one is to make sure that you are using the hand on the same side. So, for example, if Joseph is throwing a, a right punch at me, I'm using my right hand, you see? And again, similar to we did part horse's mane, but it's more coming in this way. If he, if he comes with um, his left hand, I use my left hand. So we have a, we have a kind of a multiple kind of motion. This is... This is cross hands, right? So you can see how they, how they, real, like you can't do one. This is the main thing, this is really important. My kind of uh, little gripe about applications, how it's usually taught, is someone throws a punch, leaves a hand out there, some Tai Chi guy does a single movement and kills the person. And it's like, that's not gonna happen, right? That's not gonna happen. In real fighting, these things have to be combined. You, you go to one move, the person resists, he resists, you change. And it's the ability to change that's the key thing in all martial arts, right? The ability to, who can change fastest? So you have to understand that none of these work. It's your ability to, to same thing, I'm talking about tools, right? Give me a drill, give me a hammer, right? Now ask me, how, now ask me to make a piece of furniture. I wouldn't do very well, right? So it's not just knowing, it's not having the tools, it's the ability to apply them and know when to use this one, when to use that one. And that, of course, has to come from experience. It doesn't come from forms. It comes from actual combat experience, some kind of sparring, some kind of paired exercise. Push hands is a good start because it starts to teach you to be sensitive and relax under fire and so on, but it's a start. Okay, other questions? Uh, we had a, I think there was one more, wasn't there? Where are we? Closing from Sally. We're talking about this, this part. So you can do it like, uh, for example, say Joseph wants to strangle me, which, yeah, why wouldn't he? So I'm introducing, say, two hands for this. Look, I'm, I'm look, opening here and then plucking down. The key thing for this one is I'm not pressing, I'm plucking another energy. <clears throat> when you press, just stick your arm out for me a second. When I press, my energy has to be on top of my opponent's arm. So if his hand's here, I can press it down. If his hand's here, I can't press it because it's, it's too high. What I can do is pluck it. And the difference is plucking is in the fingers, pressing is in the palm. That's in the Tai Chi classics. A lot of what I teach just is simply because I've, I've studied the classics as well as doing a lot of sparring. So I've just looked at them and tried to, to match them up, okay? So you understand pressing is with the palms, plucking is with the fingers. So the difference between commencing form and closing form is in closing form, 
He's higher and I'm plucking it down. In commencing form, he's lower and I'm pushing it down. Okay, so this is one example. If I do this motion, prop, again, high prop, it may be, I may, I may be lucky and just pull him, pull him down, and then that's great, and then I can finish him off, okay? But in the real world, high likelihood is I do that, he does that, and then I need to change to another technique. For example, double push. Okay? What's the other things we had? We had leg extension. So imagine in Muay Thai, Thai boxing, they're more out, they're fighting from longer range. This has got more the idea in the Tai Chi that we're very close. Okay? And the hand can also be used to create. So let's see. Say he's got a body lock on the example. Okay? I can use the hand to bend him back, and that enables me to use the golden rooster technique, okay? which is a good old knee to the plums. <laughs> okay, so that's some, some ideas. How's that? Anything you want me to clarify on that? I think I've answered. Makes sense on both opening and closing. Excellent, thank you very much. That's my mission to clarify. Golden rooster we've talked about. So um, I can talk a little bit it's slightly off topic, but I don't have any other questions coming in yet. And I had a question on the snake creeps down, which is the 24 forms, which I'm happy to answer until we, uh, if we don't have any other questions, where is that? Dee -dee -dum. All right, I'll answer Mike's one until we get some other questions coming in, okay? And there is a, there is a delay, I think, so. Snake creeps down can be simple, is, is, is attacking the lower body. So if, if, if Joe's attacking the upper body and I'm ducking underneath, I'm ducking underneath but with the intention of attacking the lower body. Okay, so if you see the form when we're, we're doing this. Yes, of course, when we go all the way down, that's a great stretch, but usually not, not necessarily going to go that low. I should go from this one. Put the left one. Uh, yeah, so example. So when I, if I'm ducking a blow, I'm also penetrating deeply with the step. So I can use this kind of a method in order to create a good old, I won't show you the next bit because it involves him dropping on his head. <laughs> the key thing though is that you get your center of gravity deep. So if he's swinging at my head, so he's taking a swing, and I'm under, and I need to be deep. So I need to get his weight over. So that's shooting down. So if you look at the form, we shoot down, then we pierce up. And that can also be more simple. He goes from my head, duck back, and then I attack him at the lower game. A lot of uh, MMA and Thai fighters quite, fight quite square. In the traditional martial art, we tend to protect the groin. But combat sport, they don't need to worry because it's illegal. So if, if I'm here and I duck, I can attack low. Or if I pierce in a low using this hand, I can get underneath him and then I can drop him on his head. That's why in the form we have a, the backhand is doing that. Thank you. But that's in the 24 forms. Sometimes called squatting single whip. Oh, I have some more questions. Kick with heel, push part of bird's tail. No problem, Mike. Push part of bird's tail. Where does the energy move the opponent? The very last part you're talking about, from the G to the arm, can I just clarify? Where does the energy move the opponent? You're talking about this part. Just uh, tell me yes, Barnaby, and I'll answer that one. And I'll answer Sally's in the, in the meantime. Where did the kick with the heel come in? It's a good question. What I said was, for the knee, if you recall, I said you have to be really close to use this. So, Barnaby, yes, last bit, fine. I said you have to be really close to use this. What happens if you're too far away? So I just said about, okay, I need to use this, but he's too far away. Well, that's where the kick of the heel comes in. Okay, because if I'm too, if I'm too far away for the, the knee, I may be in range for the kick. Okay, so um, in the form, so again, if he's punching me, I'm defending and I'm kicking, could be there, could be there, could be there if you want to be flashy. But it's, the important thing is with the heel. Okay. Um, the principle is in Chinese martial art. If you're far away, you use your legs. 
closer you use your hands, closer still is elbows, knees. Closer still is wrestling technique. So we have a, and then there's the ground as well. So the right technique for the right range. Oh, one more question is Barnabas, the last bit. So the question was, where does the energy move the opponent? So we're talking about this. Sorry. Yeah. Should let Joe do this bit because I'm not so tech savvy. He's a computer expert. But the last bit. So let's have a look at this. Uh, let's say Joseph's using a press into me. I'm not on top. I'm sinking him down. You see what happened then? That was real. What happened then was that he kind of lost spats a little bit and then come back up again. That's natural because no one's just going to fall over. If Susie felt himself losing his balance, he'd come up a little bit. That's natural. As he does that, that's where I, okay. that's where I use the, because this is like the coiled spring. Let me show you something. Stand here and uh, just put me, so be strong. So look, he's a strong lad. So push me, push, don't let me push you. So he can withstand a good, good deal of force, okay? So in a Taiji principle called uprooting, I need to get my center underneath me so that I can create a force in this direction, which even the biggest, strongest person is going to go back. It works on everyone, okay? Uh, uh, provide, I should say, provide you get to them before they punch you. So let's be clear about that. It doesn't mean if you're good at this punch, you can beat everyone in a fight. I don't mean that. Or good at this push, I mean, you can beat everyone in a fight. I don't mean that. I mean, this technique, in this context, will work against much bigger and stronger people. So just make a friend. The important thing to answer Barnaby's question is, instead of pushing in a straight line, I get my center of gravity underneath him, and then I uproot. So it's this S shape that you're talking about. The last part will be done explosively if you wanted to hurt someone, but there's a push just for play fighting or just you want to move someone back. I know I'm not teaching self-defense in this lesson, so. It's contextual. Please understand being very good at push hands and being able to push somebody away is a great skill, but now you have an angry person who you just pushed who now wants to punch you. So put it into context. This might be useful if you push him out of a window or in the path of an oncoming vehicle. So now I have to post about, I take no responsibility, yada, yada, yada. I think I've answered every question. Happy to do more if, if people ask more. We can go a few more minutes. And then we're having a barbecue. Very interesting, got it. Great, I'm glad that clarifies it for you, Barnaby. Oh, you're very welcome. Again, happy to answer any more questions. Okay, just gonna do, just uh, uh, for the last bit, you may have guessed that we have filmed all of the eight form. We have done, where's the energy for push monkey? Oh, okay, that's another good question, Sally. I'm gonna, I'll come back to that. I'll come, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, similar rollback, no, Barnaby is not. Important distinctions, okay? Right, I'll come back to that. Um, learn so much, thank you, thank you, Jan. And I've also explained all of the eight energies, like, and how they work. So we've done a course of that, which is on the online academy. Um, and so it's got the eight energies, the five elements as they pertain to Tai Chi. And we've gone through the whole set showing multiple applications of all the movements. Um, that's on the academy now. There's a, there's a link below this video. And I've put a, um, a discount for all my nuggeteers. So if, when you go into the um, checkout, you put the code nugget, lowercase, N-U-G-G-E-T, for the next five days, that gives you a 25% discount. So that's about 15 bucks total. And that covers the whole, the whole lot, the whole course. Um, just seeing any more questions. Oh, I meant where does the opponent go on rollback? It's the same as push. Where does the opponent go on rollback? The thing to remember with rollback, Barnaby, is that it is following and listening to the opponent's energy. So the mo most important thing with rollback is that they are going wherever they want to go. In other words, it's very polite. You want to go that way? And you're helping them a little bit as they go, but you're fundamentally not changing their course of direction. So, um, so this will be rollback. Just put this forward so more clear for people can see. 
So when, when Joseph pushes at me, this will be roll back. Because what's happening is, you go a little slower, the speed he moves at is the speed I move at. Right? Some martial artists is different. Some martial artists, you have to be quicker than the other guy. Well, what's the problem with that? If I'm quicker than him, I'm just creating a space. Yeah, exactly. Now, I, now he has a space to fill, right? And if I'm too slow, once he comes in, I'm going to be over. Right. I need to match my roll back faster. I, I have to match. It has to be listening to his energy. They call that tenging, which means listening to his strength. So that's the important thing for a roll back. Uh, great insights. Enhance my practice. Thank you, Una. Pleasure to have you. Uh, any other questions? There was, wasn't there. There was something about Repulse Monkey. Um, was that so? Sally had the heel kick. Energy for Repulse Monkey. Okay. Um, Sally, so in the 24, we do that with a step. In the eight, it's not, there's no step. So it's a little different, but the, the important thing with, the, with this motion is when I rotate, now, if you recall, we were doing this uh, in the warm up, like for some of the early nuggets, I'm teaching you how to turn, but maintaining your balance. This is super important because if, if Joseph pushed me here and I can say, ah, I've turned, but if I'm off balance, he's still got another hand or he can do something to me right now. Okay, so it's not enough to, to turn. I have to turn while maintaining my balance. So I, I maintain my own integrity, see? If you can show it, it's really easy for people to see. If I if I wrote if I yield to this, but I lose my structure, if you can use both hands and put an I'm, I'm off balance, okay? So look. See that? Let's go with the other hand. What I, what I need to understand is how to this type of motion. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's sensitive. I'm learning how to turn on this axis while maintaining my central equilibrium. In a real fight though, this is done with footwork. Just for the beginner form, we do it stationary so you can start to feel the connection. And once you've got that, you need to add footwork to make it functional. Hello, Joan, better late than never. I'm sorry, we're wrapping up. So hopefully that answers all your questions. If you were late, don't worry, it's, it's on the channel. It will be there, you can watch the replay. Um, hi Suzanne. Yeah, watch your replay if you missed it. Don't worry. And uh, again, anyone who wants a much more in-depth coverage of these and the full course, please um, purchase a course on the academy and use the code Nugget to get twenty-five percent discount. That code's only valid for five days, though, guys. Okay. So, any? Uh, thank you, Christine. We will enjoy our barbecue. We put the coals on before, so it's going to be ready to, ready to go. Um, so it's great to be back, and thanks, everyone, for, for your support. Um, if you're not in a good place because of the um, coronavirus, I totally get that. Don't worry about the academy stuff. There'll be, more, there'll be more freebies. And just appreciate you like, share, and support. That's great. Thanks, Barnaby. So those of you who are raking it in from the uh, – who work on, online or something like that, you can, you can buy my courses. If not, no problem. Jane, Lily. Excellent. So I'm going to call it there. And we're going to thank you all. And we'll, we'll do another one soon. Just drop me messages. I'm on Facebook. If you're not in a member of uh, Rising Crane Tai Chi, join it. I'll let you in. I answer questions. And I will do another nugget. So see you for today. We're going to salute out. Thank you, everyone. And see you guys next time.